So, hey, my name is Deepak Shukla. I am the founder at the Pearl Lemon Group. We are multi seven figures. There's, it's a, it's a business that I bootstrapped. I'm, I'm 37. I started when I was 30. I returned home after backpacking without a penny to my name and, and, and built this and several businesses out alongside it. And, and during that time, I have got married, relocated to Italy, live in countryside Italy now with my wife, who's Italian, born and raised. And I have got back into ultra marathon running and recently completed a 100 mile run in my spare time outside of work alongside just living life in general. So I want to talk to you today about some of the insights that I've picked up from my journey over the last several years and to hopefully give you and offer some insight into how you can in your own journeys accelerate your professional and personal success in that time we've built out businesses that I had no previous knowledge of I'd never done SEO before 30 I'd never done all of the businesses that we're in everything has come to me and has been new and I definitely think that there's a framework for personal and professional development that at least has worked for me to some degree and I just want to offer you some of my insights as you are on your own journeys to success and professional development and that's really what I want to talk to you about today so so that's the ultimate goal of today and yeah I, I really want you to be able to walk away with the not only the motivation but also a bit of a practical framework so I, I, I want to kind of delve into both areas. So I think that one of the key things when it comes to development is that, so my 100 mile run was a good example of it, that when it comes to big new audacious goals most of us most of the time when it comes to intensity if you want to achieve an outsized return have the ability to focus on one new thing at a time now when i say one new thing i'm talking about the hard things the things that you find hard because the things that you find hard inherently will require willpower and they'll require willpower on a continual basis and willpower, of course, is something that depletes on a daily basis. And 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 a good example of where I succeeded is the training for this ultra. A good example of something I tried to do in parallel where I got a diluted result was learning Italian, as an example. I'm not in eight months a fluent Italian speaker. Had I chosen that, as my goal, maybe the outcome could have been different. I did choose to do both, but one ultimately suffered at the expense of the other. So that's a truism for pretty much everyone. Really, we've got the ability to focus on one big thing to then achieve, and as I said, an, an, an outsized income. So the intensity of that first one thing can predominantly influence your success of all of those other things okay now what i would say then with that in mind is the there tends to be with whatever that one thing is as you think about what should that one thing be there's 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 so you've got you've got this concept of the one thing focusing on the one thing most people will attempt to focus on multiple things and again within one thing there's lots of often subsidiary tasks that are associated with that one thing so if people choose to for example focus on their health that comes as a combination of typically exercise and diet but then it can extend to other things outside of that which is routines the time that you wake up the time that you exercise so when we talk about one thing if you think about it in those terms there's often multiple things that surround it so you've got your one area of focus and then there's small branches that come off off it much like a tree and its roots so you pick which tree you choose you're going to choose to grow in your lives and if you think about fundamentally all of the buckets that we have in our lives the buckets or the trees they don't really tend to change there's 
health, which is exercise, fitness, and all of the things that are subsidiary. There's wealth, which is your professional career, your career earnings, your income. There, So there's health, there's wealth, there's self, which is your headspace, your mindset, how you feel about life, your general attitude and approach. So there's health, there's self, there's wealth, and then there's everyone else, which is friends, family, and all of the relationships in your lives. So they tend to be the, the, the four buckets, right? And what's really powerful and useful to understand is that we at all points for our lives we've got health we've got wealth we've got self and we've got everyone else right we all work on these areas to different degrees most people in their lives work on these you will work on these areas because everyone works on these areas reactively because if you have a blow up in your personal life which is everyone else, typically there's some form of adjustment. Either you adjust or the person adjusts to you. That's typically what tends to happen, okay? The same things apply in every other bucket. Is this making sense right now? So professionally, if you think about wealth, you have a goal to perform as part of a certain project or, which is proactive, but reactive is you get some feedback about a piece of work that you've done or you run an ad campaign and you don't get the result you were looking for. So you react and ultimately respond. So everyone in all of these areas tends to be reactive. And the area that you tend to focus upon tends to be the area in which you experience the most pain. Have short breath when you walk up the stairs. For many of you, that might worry you. So that will cause you to dive into the health bucket. So, so that's one example of something that would cause you to instill change. Now, most people go through their lives working reactively in most of these areas. And some people, depending upon your level of introspection, choose to blame everyone else, which is your environment, your circumstances, your surrounding, that it wasn't my fault complex that some people have, okay? So that's the, and, and, and there's types of people, right? These are the the underperformers or the people that get net neutral or not net negative results in your life because you choose to be reactive, but the reactive approach you have in these buckets is, oh, you know what, I need to focus. You, you, don't, you don't have a constructive approach to the reactivity. Other people are constructive. So you get feedback and you adjust, okay? So you adjust based upon the feedback that you get. And, and these are people that perform net to slightly above average to different degrees, okay? If you think of it as a pendulum, okay? You go to the job, you do what you can in the time that you have, you get feedback based upon performance, or you go and run, or you go and train, you measure, you get feedback, whether it's from a coach or from yourself, and then you try and improve based upon feedback that you get from the marketplace. And these are the net neutral to, to, to average performers that generally or typically progress at an expected pace within your life. And this is, this is actually the place where most people end up. Most people in life, because that, 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 that area is, is comfortable for most people, okay? That's the area where you over time have a relationship partner, you over time have children, you over time see systematic growth within your career, these are actually all expected changes. Does that make sense? That one would expect in a normal circumstance to spend X amount of hours, months, years, decades in a certain role and to see some progression over time. I'm a better mother or father with my third child versus my first child because I reacted and I got constructively better. So this is, this is the majority of people, okay? Now, those who wish or desire to become exceptional, choose to be proactive in each of these buckets. Does that make sense? So you drive for change even in absence of any reaction from the marketplace, which is actually not the way that we are designed as humans. It's counter to our actual reptilian programming, meaning that a lot of people don't bother trying to do a one rep max or a 
best five minute, best, a best one mile run or best time to launch a campaign or best anything, unless there's some external pressure to instill that change. Does that make sense? That, 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 that's, that's most people. That's 90% of people. <clears throat> and that's where for those who choose it, you have the most opportunity to drive exceptional change in your life at such a time where you determine that, okay, I've got these four buckets. I've got health, I've got self, I've got wealth, and I've got everyone else. I want to dramatically change the trajectory of my life. And I will say up to date <clears throat> that certainly the last 10 years of my life have been intentional. There's been things that I've strived for. There's a certain quality of relationship I wanted when I grew with Daniela that led me into a long period of counseling. There's a certain type of woman that I wanted in my life that led me to be the way that I am and communicate the way that I am because there was a certain caliber of, of, of woman that I wanted in my life. Financial, similar things in all of these other areas, okay? Now, now that we understand that focus in one area requires to some degree the exclusion of others or requires an intense amount of focus because there's always sub goals in relation to the primary goal. And we also understand that there's these buckets, health, wealth, self, everyone else, which we all will develop probably reactively to because that's what people ordinarily in ordinary circumstances do. Then you have the option to be proactive in one of the buckets or all of the buckets, okay? Now, what you then need to determine is if in any of those buckets or any of those trees, let's call them trees, is one of them a gateway to growing all the other trees in your garden? So in, and it will be different again for different people, and you will know this as you examine your life, so areas in terms of what you could examine when it comes to health, it's how do my energy levels change throughout the day? But who am I benchmarking my energy levels against? Because maybe my benchmarks are wrong and therefore my expectations are wrong. Who do I want to benchmark myself against? So that's often something that people don't always appreciate. So that's something to consider with health energy levels, general level of ability to focus, ability to manage multiple stresses is often a function of health. And then you've got, of course, wealth. If I map out my career progression, if I map out my competency at work, if I map out myself, my thoughts, my outlook, my mindset, my issues or not with security, insecurity, self-esteem, everyone else, who are the people around me? What kind of messages am I taking in? What are they doing with their life? What is the general stock of the people around me? What is their direction, mission, and vision? Is it aligned with where I want to be? You'll typically find that one of those trees will help grow all of the other trees in your garden. And you need to pick which tree that is. So for some of you, you might say that, well, you know what? My health is in such a place that I might be sicker than I like. I then have issues that bleed into every other area of my life. Some of you might say I have difficult relationships at work and at home. And if I improve that, that will actually improve everything else. Others of you might say, I am struggling and in a place financially where I don't want to be. So if I make an intense focus in this place, it will ease up my relationships. It will allow me more room to focus on exercise, et cetera, et cetera. Is this making sense, everybody, where I'm going with it? So typically one tree in your garden can help grow all of the others. And for all of you, the answers to that might be slightly different. So the tree, for example, that I'm focusing upon at the moment actually isn't the 100 mile event. What that's an outside in perception. And I raise that because everyone's relative levels are different in terms of where you are and where you're at on the trajectory. My focus in terms of how I can dramatically change the outcome of my life is looking at the wealth quadrant by leveling up the quality of the people that are part of the company 
by improving the standard requirement to work at Pearl Lemon, as well as on top of that, improving the stock of the people that I already have, because I believe that it's the people in this room that can actually change the traje trajectory of, of my wealth. And that's my core focus, because my most important client is my team, because my team drives all the success that I will see in the wealth quadrant. And the reason I'm focused on the wealth quadrant is because that at the moment is a gateway because I am at a stage where that will then make changes, for example, to the life that Daniela and I will have as we think about children and as I think about financially getting set up in Italy, as an example. So, 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 so that at the moment would be, for example, something of a gateway. So understand that True change requires intense focus. Understand that there are these trees in each of your gardens. Perform a mental autopsy of all of the trees that exist in your garden and identify the one tree that can grow all others. And that will typically be the place where if you focus on it enough, you will see an outsized return on investment based upon the improvements you make in that space because that will naturally then bleed into all of the other areas. And, and that's something that a lot of people don't always necessarily actively focus upon enough. And part of that is really running a autopsy of those buckets and the areas and thinking about that in context of the ideal outcome that you want to optimize for. Now, now, what sits underneath all of this is, and some people argue this is intrinsic. I do think with the right motivators, it can become instilled in anyone, irrespective of whether it's intrinsic, is whether you determine to commit yourself to a lifetime of continuous self-improvement. And that is not for everyone. But if you can build that into the core of the way that you approach anything that you do, you will typically see over time that even if you're in the middle bucket where you're reactive, but to some degree you become pre proactive because everything's a relative scale. Everything's a relative scale. You're, everyone in different areas of their lives exists in each of those areas where you're reactive net negative your reactive constructive or your proactive positive does that make sense it's not the case that you're 100 in one bucket or in one ultimately area and therefore that tree will grow different things will take precedent at different points of your life and some of that will be dictated by your relationships your circumstances so the everything else another part of it of course is also your environment your literal environment who you're around, the posters that you have up on the wall, the ultimately information that you intake and the people that you get exposure to and the places that you go to and, and, and what that does to your psychology and mindset. So I think that <clears throat> figuring out which area or which tree you choose to grow is a really, really important thing because with enough intense focus, that can lead to a change in every other area of your life. And, and, and part of that, again, relates to fundamentally the dedication for or the desire for continuous self-improvement. Because then, and I don't think it's focused upon enough, because then if you want to, and again, it's, you know, the 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 challenge is, and I think there's sometimes a bit of a misnomer. The challenge is that if you wish to lead an extraordinary life, that also means committing to a continuous lifetime of some discomfort. Does that make sense? Because that's the only way that you can achieve true progress. It involves putting yourself on a systematic basis into places that you have not yet been before, because to get you to places you have not yet been. You have to do things you've currently not yet done. It's true. You have to, you have to, if you have a desire to live on your own terms, in your own means, and again, this is very relative, right? To live an extraordinary life. Extraordinary is relative, but typically speaking, the word extraordinary implies that you want to live in a way 
that typically around you no one else is living else it would be ordinary does that make sense so 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 that's something that you need to personally determine if it is something that you desire to and 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 to some degree in reaching for it it would typically to some degree tend to improve every other aspect of your ordinary life and that's something that you need to decide and if you do make that 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 decision then it's ultimately a case of determining how is it you wish to live so that's when thinking about those areas thinking about the point of focus thinking about what it is that you're trying to optimize for because there needs to be a big why attached to discomfort because if i'm going to be uncomfortable it's got to be fucking worth it frankly so what is it that i'm trying to optimize for and 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 most pe and, and 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 this is the key what am i trying to optimize for and over what timeline am i prepared to wait for that return on investment does that make sense because Quick wins are typically ephemeral, meaning that they don't last long. And long wins or lifetime wins typically take longer to acquire. But long wins last longer in your life and echo out to the lives of others in such a more significant way. So that's a determination that you need to make, okay? And that's where you need to be able to offset the cost up front for the projected return. And you need to accept that the path to doing that is far from linear because it's not a 100% in, 100% out return on investment with, with personal growth. It's typically a 200% investment for 99% of the time, a 1% return on investment until you find the way to get the outsized return. And that's the part where most people choose to falter or choose to flail. I've, if I look at my journey with ultra running, with, with running, thinking about from when I started at 15, my first five kilometer runs around the park to today running 160 kilometers, what's disguised outside of what you're hearing is probably a decade of not choosing to be focused upon it because I actually got the same result for over a decade because I didn't choose to be intentional about the result I was optimizing for. So that is something that can often disguise success. What typically tends to happen, and this is the part that makes it uncomfortable, what typically tends to happen, and, and, and it's okay to do that, but it's just about understanding the long-term result you're trying to optimize for, is that what tends to happen is that we reach a place of competency and then we choose to stop working in that space. And then without really realizing, time tends to pass and we look and see that we've not progressed. It's like, oh, you know what? In the last weeks, months, years, I've not, I've not really made the progress that I saw. Why is that? Probably because I haven't put the work in. So I think that you'll discover that you're competent in areas of your life, but you'll discover that competence or perceived competence is a function of how you choose to benchmark what you think competency is. Because we're only competent because we tend to look at what's around us and what's accepted by the people that are around us to feel that that's comfort, that's normal. Does that make sense? So typically in that circumstance, what needs to change is the ambitions, aspirations, or the stock of the people that are around us. So for example, Shania, if you're surrounded by, for example, as an example, mothers who don't have ambitious careers, probably that's a problem because unknowingly you're normalizing a standard, which in maybe five years from now, when Rian is six years old, you'll feel is unacceptable as the role model that you want to set so you might say to myself well actually the people that are part of my journey are not going to the place that I want to go and it's going to be insidious when someone says okay great do you want to have a cup of tea at three o'clock do you want to just go down to the local cafe at 11 a.m do you want to just do the school run together and you think well are these the habits of people that 
are those I wish to emulate. Aaron, you'll read this in Atomic Habits, that it's not about outcomes to a degree. It's about looking at the lives and habits of people that are top performers and seeing how you can imbibe and instill those habits and the things that you do. So, 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 so one big part of this, of course, is benchmarks. Now, again, figure out which is the tree that you think is the gateway, which, which one will change your lovers, and then aggressively investigate that. And to a degree, it begins by understanding, okay, there's these areas. Okay, great. With each of these areas, there's clear items that I can look at. And within that, within the one big thing, there'll also be lots of quick wins. So a quick win for Saurabh, as you were saying to me this morning, was that Deepak, the difference between me waking up at six to five is 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 not that much, which is great and it's fantastic. So we will all also have access to quick wins in our lives, and quick wins are different from different different from different people. A quick win for me was installing newsfeed blocker when newsfeed eradicator when I kept my social media accounts open. So for the last three, four years, I've maintained social accounts because I wish to publish on them, but I eradicated my newsfeed because I wasn't bothered about the lives of other people. And that was a distraction from my goal with social media. Okay, so there'll be tactics that surround each of the areas in which you choose to focus. So there's two buckets, there's two parts to the focus. So audit every area of your life and identify all of the quick wins and the quick wins can have a significant compound effect when looked at cumulatively so malcolm that might mean if you have new subscriptions or youtube subscriptions or stuff that you get exposure to that's nature documentaries that's science fiction maybe you change that and change it to latest youtube updates from seo influencers from others so you begin to rewire your habits and the way that you identify whether it's a quick win is where you see there's minimal cognitive resistance to change because you say that you know what that, that wasn't that hard so find as many of those that wasn't that hard as possible and execute all of them and where the resistance starts you'll understand that that's probably where you need to pause and take stock and say okay this is fine but in doing that, you'll again raise that standard that you set for yourself. And 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 you'll see. That, and and there's there's a hundred and one examples of this, but it will change. So that's the waking up at that's waking up before dawn. That's waking up relatively uh, several hours ahead of your household or your workplace, so you're able to have additional time in the day to develop yourself. That's eradicating distraction which can manifest and come in many forms whether that's social meetings that don't add value to your direction if that's social media consumption that doesn't add value to your direction whether that's different forms of consumption that ultimately are destructive to progress so things such as that you know different example that i'm trying to a journey i'm trying to go on right now is some people talk about not watching TV. I'm trying to transition to only watching TV when I watch TV with Daniela because there's TV shows that we watch together. So it forms part of our relationship, part of our bonding experience. But I'm trying to develop the discipline to say, well, outside of that, what value am I gaining from watching? I watched, I just finished watching The Tulsa King with Sylvester Stallone. And I thought, I just wasted my life watching that TV show because it's just another one in a long list of TV shows that I'll forget about in a year from now. Now, that's actually, for me, the area that I'm trying to build discipline in now, because that's my <laughs> space that I find challenging, because I revert back to finding something that's a TV show or hearing about something. Oh, wow. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is coming out. Oh, wow. The qu a Quiet Place, the, the prequel is coming out. I really want to watch those. I, was even, I even found myself this this morning or yesterday, actually, driving with Daniela to a restaurant and saying to her, oh, you know what? A Quiet Place 3 is coming out in Italy. I think I'm going to drive to Turin to watch it. So I was willing to spend a whole eight hour day because I drive there. I set up for the day to watch a damn movie. So I just it's so so so, so you can catch yourself falling into these traps that we set for ourselves. OK, 
So, 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 so just raising your level of consciousness and thinking about, oh, you know what? Everyone's got their own version of that. Okay. Everyone's got their own version of that. And it's just about being aware of what these patterns are. And again, the, the, you need to figure out what your why is. Why is typically to some degree don't tend to change for people. It's about love. It's about people that you care about, which begins of, of course, I love myself. So I want better for myself. I want better in my life. I want better options. I want better relationships. And then it's also about typically the people that you love. I want better outcomes for the people that are around me. I want to afford them better opportunities. Those tend to really not change for a lot of people. And money is often just a function of that, if that makes sense. It's not about the money at all. It's about the access to options or the lack or ease of stress that it creates in your life. As an example, okay, money, 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 and, 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 and that, and that's where sometimes people get into short-term thinking that comes actually not through short-term short -term optimizations where you look at, for example, how do I justify or build out the next, for example, salary increase or otherwise. It's actually a function of how can I build excellence into the work that I do because then irrespective of what my employer or anyone else thinks about me, my success and my contribution will be undeniable. And there's a deferred benefit you need to invest there because it's not that the, 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 the proof is there, but it's an act of faith that we commit to say, well, if I can take any, for you, Malcolm, it would be any client that we have and achieve a graph that looks like this systematically for every single client. And I share a screenshot like that. I could probably double my income and irrespective of whether Deepak rewarded me as such that would be a skill that would allow me to go and double my income anywhere in the marketplace. Does that make sense? So people often typically optimize for the wrong goal sometimes because we get into, and we're trained to be the short-term thinkers. So my short-term need is that I really want to go to Turin because A Quiet Place 1 and 2 is fucking good and I want to watch it and it'll be cool and I'll enjoy it and I get popcorn and I have a day out and I'll drive into Turin and I'll... The deferred benefit is if the deferred benefit, and this is the part that's difficult, is if I can resist that and if I can actually get to a place where I only watch TV with Daniela because I will never stop doing that because it's a part of our relationship and I enjoy it, I will win back eight hours a week probably because I find myself, I'll have days where I'll binge. That is such a huge benefit because of all of the other things it will give me access to. So that's, for example, so it seems seemingly inane, but that's actually the gateway for me right now because it's a big gateway because I fluctuate. I'll go for days where I'll not watch much, but then there'll be days where I'll go through a whole YouTube. My, and, 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 and figuring out these things in our lives, I think, is, 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 is so, so important. And, and you'll discover, and this is where the whole ordinary, extraordinary thing most of the people around you probably wouldn't never even attempt such a thing or never even be conscious to such a thing as being something that could change. So then, you know, it and, and, and the gateway for me then is that, okay, great. It gives me eight more hours a week to learn how to get to take Pearl Lemon to $10 million a year, because then I can, you know, my, one of, one of, for example, one of my work goals is to say, guys, I can triple everyone's income and it's no sweat off my back because we make so much profit that it doesn't matter anymore. And ironically, the way that I do that is develop the team that I have, because if I develop the team that I have, then you start to achieve outsized results at work. If you achieve outsized results at work, you win, I win, we all win. Do you see where I'm going with this? And, 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 and the, 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 the biggest journey that I need to figure out is, how, how, you know, how do I do that? There's ideas because we all have ideas from the books that we read, from the people that we speak to. But of course, we all need, and often creating more time in your week, is we need the time to test. Because the path to achieve these things is rarely linear. Which is why then Evan and Aaron, I revert back to fitness at the stage you're in, should be a nominal part of your cognitive contribution. Because the path to achieving the body that we want, in, in your instances, for example, is so linear. There's a proven, straightforward process. For other people, it might not be linear because I say it's been a path filled with complications. Again, there's different gateways for different people, right? And everyone's got to figure out what their gateway is. But I think that that's 
you know, an example of how something seemingly so inane can have such a huge impact on my life, but the challenge of doing it is difficult because we all have those moments where we figure out, well, what are my relative vices? We all have vices. What happens, of course, is the journey of substitution. And the journey of substitution is good. That's a going from heroin to coke to marijuana to cigarettes to vapes to not smoking at all, right? And that's, a, that's, that's still a useful journey, okay? And everyone's got their proximate equivalent in their lives. But just committing to the journey, and that's where we go back and revert back to, you need to determine whether you want to have a dedication to a lifelong journey of continuous self-improvement because then there's no all of the environmental constraints come to zero because you control and determine your destiny because I can't place a cap on that no no one around you can place a cap on that because you determine to take control of all of the outcomes and that comes from optimizing all of your inputs to see what return that you can get and if you can begin to apply some of these things in your life and just beginning for many of you it's just becoming a, about becoming consciously aware and then it's just a, a journey and it the age is irrelevant you people start this at 60 people start this at 16 and you can change your fucking life in like five years you can change your entire life of course it begins with changing what's going on in here because then, and over time, people will see it out there. Much in the same way that I've started this journey. When I when I left Deloitte, I think it was at 22, 23, as an as a Indian kid that was an art student at the time of the credit crunch back in 2009, everyone in my family thought it was such a ridiculous thing. They're like, you know, why are you, why, you know, you've got this great degree, go and get this great job. And at that time, I wasn't clear on what my goals were, but I knew what my goals weren't. And I saw the future where I was and I didn't like what I was looking at. So I said, okay, I've got to go and figure out something, but this isn't it. So I think that, and, and that's taken me, it's taken me the time that it's taken me, I think, to figure that out. Because regret to some degree is not useful as an emotion. It just does not help anything. It's just about looking forward. And life is long, to be honest with you. There's people now that are living until 110, 120 and 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 it's all a matter of perspective so life is long and there's a lot of life in the years that you have and and there's so much that you can do with the time so i think that in summary figure out and do an autopsy of all of those four areas your health yourself your wealth and everyone else look at those four areas write them down think about all of the different things that relate to those areas. Figure out which of those trees is a gateway that will grow all of the other trees. Typically, your heart will tell you because you'll say that this is the area that's most destructive or not as constructive as I like. Determine the kind of individual you want to be. Do I want to be proactive or I want to be... You'll be reactive. If I've done my job correctly, at least everyone will be constructively reactive here. Does that make sense? That I will say things or you will experience a knockback and you'll perform. If you want to be phenomenal at Pearl Lemon and in life, you'll move from reactive to massively proactive because that's how you achieved outsized results. It's the only way. It's the only way. And of course, you want to then optimize to be around people at who are at a minimum constructively reactive. And that's currently probably where I'm at with Pearl Lemon, if that makes sense. I'm trying to bring in our stock of people who are constructively reactive. There's still some challenges within Pearl Lemon that I think that need to be changed. But my journey of getting people to a place that are constructively proactive, honestly, will probably take me another two years. Because the more that I live and the longer I do this, the, re the, long the more I realize that true change takes time. Um, true change does take time. But we optimize for the quick wins because quick wins are great and they keep you going. So alongside working out the tree that will grow all of the other trees all of us can figure out what the quick wins in our lives are and begin to execute as many as possible so that's for shania she said was downloading the audible books and saying i'm now going to read and you said watch and ask me in a month two months how many books that i've read so that as you said in reference to your degree and how much you enjoy reading that could be 
And you'll figure it out from your resistance to, because there's steps that are involved. There's actually, as you said, there's reading, there's taking notes, there's bringing what you read into the practice of work because it's a beautiful thing. That's what's beautiful. You've got sales books and you've got the opportunity to practice and get direct, direct feedback from the marketplace. Say, I've read this book about X, Y, Z. Now I'm going to go and get on the phone and I'm going to see if it's going to transform my ability to sell, which is, which is wonderful. So that's the low branch on one of the trees, which is your wealth tree that you want to optimize for. And that can provide an outsized return potentially, because that could be the one thing that takes you from booking one appointment a day to one appointment an hour, which is eight appointments a day, which is 40 appointments a week, which can transform that, 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 that alone could transform the entire company. Yeah. Sebastian has done great work and he is in a space where he's done great work. He's done great. Con there's been a great contribution. And one of the things that he feels he wants to optimize for is increasing his salary. The challenge we have as a team is that we're not in a place where, for example, on the lead generation front, we're getting the consistency that we want. So, so, so interestingly, and what people perhaps aren't conscious enough, you know, the work that Shania, Evan, Aaron, Saurabh, you do, can change a trajectory of Sebastian's life, just as it can change yours. Does that make sense? Because that's where within the company, we're all individual trees, the growth of one tree will become a gateway to growing all others. Does that make sense? Because Mal, for example, Sebastian has to contend with the reality that two clients canceled this month. And that is, you know, because all trees are connected, right? And it's like, I can't, you, you, I can't, they cannot be viewed in isolation. So, so that's where I also want to expand your consciousness to understand that by improving yourself, you'll improve not only the people in your personal lives, but you'll affect the lives of people that you work professionally in ways probably you hadn't even considered. Because that means, you know, Shania, great work you put in will actually literally directly mean that Sorab can... For example, go out on the weekend and take his daughter to an amazing restaurant and not worry about things because as you rise, the company rises with you and the fortunes of all others rises with you. So, 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 does this make sense, everybody? That it's not just your own life. You, you hold the future of everyone's life in the company in your hands because if you build outsized results and build excellence, you tend to raise the stock of everyone, the stock as in the ability, as well as the fortunes of everyone else around you. And that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, which is, which is, which is why it's also meaningful to do the early mornings or to do the late nights or to put in whatever relevant effort is required to optimize for the deferred benefit. Because that's the big win. The big win is the deferred result. Because everything, you know, quick wins are easy come, easy go, but they're important and we should do them. But the big change in your lives and everyone's got their relative ambitions are the ones that, you know, require time. So any questions or any questions, first of all, guys, that you have? Okay, amazing. Let, let's round Robin. And I'd love to hear from everybody in terms of the one or two things that created aha moments in their own mind as to, Okay, that's something I immediately need to go and explore and investigate. Just put your hand up if you'd like to just give your own comments. Let's start with Troy. Um, <clears throat> to be constructive over reactive. Um, and most people back are backed by external rather than internal. And that should be the other way around, rather be, to be backed internally to, you know, get the best externally, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that... Moving from external to internal is so huge because otherwise you dictate your progress based upon the feedback of others. And that's just like a crazy way to live life. It's, I will improve at the pace, not that I set, but that people set for me, which is actually what happens when you wait for feedback. Does that make sense? This is why you can do your own autopsies of your own work. You can do your own after action reports. You can benchmark against people that are outstanding and say, that's outstanding in my mind, but that's actually my limited thinking. I need to normalize that and I need to make that my new normal. And that's uncomfortable. Most people don't want to do that. It's great. Amazing. Thank you. Who's next? Malcolm, let's go. 
self-help wealth and how those branches play together and how improving in one can help you improve in the others. That's one. As well as the quick wins, like the waking up just an hour earlier can help. So that that to me was was a really highlight. Okay, amazing. Absolutely. Health, self, wealth, and everyone else. And then being, we all have those buckets in our lives. Those buckets don't change. And which is a tree that will grow all others. And you probably have already got an idea in your own mind of, wow, if I improve this, it'll probably improve everything else, which is amazing. And 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 yeah, waking up earlier changed my life. I did it, started during COVID. And as some of the people in this room will know, I read more books. I made more money. I had a happier relationship. I changed my life. And people were like, what did you do? I said, I started waking up earlier. They're like, that seems, is that it? I said, you don't understand how much that changes because you just, you just, you just, it changes everything. So amazing. Thank you, Malcolm. Let's go Shania and then I'll go Manuel. Manuel. Um, it's similar to what Malcolm was saying, actually. I think I've said to you before that as a mum and as a working mum, it's very easy to say, I just don't have the time. Yeah. But like you said about eradicating distractions, if I, rather than wait until he wakes up to wake up, if I set a goal to be waking up two hours before he's due to wake up in that two hours, I would have so much more time to not only do self-improvement, but work on the things internally that I want to work on. But yeah, I think that for me, eradicating distractions, definitely. Amazing. And that could be the, the quick or the big win, because of course, challenge is relative. But as you said, two additional hours a day, I'm now going to not wake up when Rian wakes up, if his feeding time is 8 a.m. typically and he's awake between 7, 45, 8, 15, whatever, I'm going to make sure that I'm up at 6 a.m. every day because that will give me, without question, at least 90 minutes, even if he wakes up early. That will change your life. That will change your life. Absolutely. I think that that's, 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 that's absolutely amazing. So thank you, Shania. Manuel? Yeah, I think um, just even being being aware. So um, once you've heard of this concept about being uh, proactive and not uh, reactionary and letting what other people think uh, di dictate how you uh, pursue your goals, I think even if you're not in a space where you're going to start, you know, um, making plans yet, just to be aware of it is, is a big win because um, you can then even stop the process of allowing people to dictate what you do before you start being proactive. So even just that 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 part of um, making sure you're the one that makes your own decisions, it can have a huge impact. Amazing, amazing. And this is what people talk about when they refer to we're all mostly stuck in the matrix or we are victim to other people's designs or the systems out. It's now that you've become consciously aware it is true that through, and that's where people talk about people that can bend. All of us can do things that in a couple of years from now will seem like magic to other people because by it simply through the force of your will, you can bend reality because you determine to make the changes that can lead to what other people will perceive as unbelievable or unfathomable results. And it begins with these small changes and the compound effect. So just being aware of it, as you said, man, I'm being like, okay, wow, that's going to change everything because it sounds like there's a new door that's opened up in your mind. And at some point you're going to walk through that door and you're going to see what's on the other side. So amazing. Thank you. Who's next? Great, Sebastian. Well, we can't hear you, Sebastian, bud. Sorry, for some reason the audio is playing up. So I'll, I'll come back to you. No problem. Who's next? Evan. I think um, the main takeaway with personally, I've got history in as well, is setting multiple goals can take away overall progression from each other. Um, so like what you're saying about health, wealth, self and everyone else is important to not, it's balancing those is important to not only feel stable, but then you need to have those balance to go beyond what you're, where you're already at and be constructive. Yeah. and building yourself and neglecting one of the buckets whilst trying to build on another is neglecting the bucket you're trying to build on almost is what I'm trying to trying to say and the analogy about like almost the root network with with the trees and how watering one tree also also feeds the other 
watering and being putting in the work is what I'm taking away from it. And but still don't neglect because just watering one won't infinitely grow the others as well. That's only to an extent. And even at Pearl Lemon, the main takeaway is there's a similar root network to what you're initially explaining, where one bucket is also intertwined with another, like health wealth cells. Yeah, amazing. I think thank you, thank you for that, Evan. I think that as you said, choosing an area to be, I mean, even making the move, and this is what typically tends to happen, and and this is it's great what you said. Most people have, and it, you'll know it when your ego gets in the way, in some aspects of their life, go ultimate reactive, destructive, because your ego says, well, screw you, you're being this, you're being that. When if we can say no to the ego and say, what can I learn from this? What can I do better, irrespective of any limitation or shortcoming or unfair response that I've got? Already, that will be an amazing thing. So as you have these four trees, if you can move to being heavily proactive in one space and then reactive, constructive in all the other spaces, already you'll be well ahead of most people. And you'll see it manifest, by the way, at work. You'll see it manifest in your life. It's very, very much easier when your ego arises to be negative in feedback instead of thinking of, well, don't shoot the message. Don't shoot the messenger. What's the learning from this message, irrespective of the way the medicine has been served? Does that make sense, guys? So you'll see that happen. It's like, well, you know what? Deepak could have given you that feedback in a much nicer way. And to be frank, he was uh, absolute also in the way that he said it. But is there a reason that he said what he said? Is there some truth that I can learn irrespective of how I'm treated that can better me from this? And that's something that if you can all begin to build in, you'll, you'll just become better because then that's how you can rely upon passive feedback to better yourself whilst you choose to go and focus in one space. So you can say, I'm going to be constructive, proactive with, let's say, for example, work as an example. So I'm going to spend my evenings and weekends for an intense month while my motivation is high. It's reading all of the sales books and reading all of these other areas. And there'll be some consequences in other areas of my life while I go through this metamorphosis, you know, the the, the, butterf the caterpillar to the butterfly. And as a consequence, Evan or Shania, your, 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 your boyfriend, your mom, your dad might say, you're not doing the damn dishes anymore. I'm getting super bloody annoyed. Where historically you've maybe done the dishes because your focus is distracted. And the ego in you will say, well, I'm trying to grow our future and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, which is one way to react. Whereas another way to react is how can I do both? Because I want to be the kind of person who can do the dishes as well as read the books, because then I'm just going to become superhuman. Do you see the difference there and how in practice most people will defer to the, well, Deepak, you're asking me to do all of this stuff. Da, 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 and it's unreasonable you win if you're able to do both not me you win because you want to be the guy to say you know what i can do both i can wash your dishes i can read the fucking books and i can prove to you i can run this fucking house and do everything i want to do I, I i always want to be that guy my ego will oftentimes prevent me from being that guy because i'm like oh fuck you you're being an arsehole this that my my yeah, d does this make sense guys what i'm saying but actually we all want to be that guy or that girl to say how do you do it you know shania your house is spick and span you are in fabulous shape you seem healthier than ever you have got a triple promotion at work you seem to be fulfilled with your and of course the journey to getting there isn't easy because the first time around, you might say, you know what, screw you. You should wash the effing dishes. I'm focused upon this. That's the that's the knee-jerk response. And I get into that space still because we don't stop being in any of these spaces, but it's about the improvement over time. But then as a consequence afterwards, you can think, you know what? I can probably do those dishes while I'm listening to this podcast. And let me at least try it before I knock it. Oh, you know what? I can do the dishes while I'm listening to the podcast. Great. I improved the quality of my relationship and I'm still improving myself. Now I'm winning. Does this make sense, guys? So with what you're saying, Evan, absolutely. Focus in one space will cause other areas to not be watered as much 
and there's typically a response around you to to this and how you respond to the constructive sorry rather the reactive spaces is really really important and and pro i'm hoping that some people are having aha moments here because it's our ego in all spaces that causes us to respond like that and i invite and encourage you to be that guy to be that girl because i always want to be that guy you know another example that used to happen took me longer than i would have liked to have understood this way way longer than i would have liked so i'll sometimes have so daniel is italian and i'm english and we have differences in terms of the way in which we respond to things so her frequency is different from my re frequency in terms of the literal either decibel or energy of response so italians to to be stereo to be a bit of a stereotype will respond more bombastic you know she'll shout more for example than i will and that will historically my ego would have come into check and i would have said well it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit you're a bit overreacting a bit it's a bit this is a bit much and it's taken me far far longer than i would have liked to understand that that doesn't help me win that what actually helps me win is to understand that, okay, what is the meaning I can take from this? Calm your ego and let's talk through it. And she's, she's, you know, it's just a different spectrum that we're working from. And I need to actually adjust myself. So rather than responding negatively, you know, one of the things that a friend of mine, Zorab used, to, uh, Zorab used to say is that Deepak, if you get emotional, irrespective of how emotional anyone is around you so if you start shouting if you raise your voice if you swear that's your weakness because he says like a real man would not do those things because you need to be strong in the face of any kind of emotional challenge around you took me you know so if someone swears at you and you think it's uncalled for and then you swear back that's that's shame on you shame on you if someone does something unjust to you and then you say something back to hurt them. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Very, very, very difficult to do when you feel people are being unfair. But that's what growth looks like. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that great point, Evan. And these are some of the things that I think about when I hear about how to manage that. Because you will come into conflict if you choose this path. And I invite all of you to pick the area in which you choose to be proactive and you will see that other things will slip in your life and then there'll be sometimes at some level a negative response and it will take all of your will sometimes to see the deferred benefit the bigger picture that if you argue about why i've not done something arguing back doesn't help us win actually it's lose lose so actually, I need to learn to be the person who can listen to the podcast and do the dishes rather than complain about the fact that I need to listen to the podcast. And that's why I can't do the dishes. Actually, I want to be the guy that can do both. So so, so that's my takeaway from your takeaway, Evan. Who's next? Cool. Aaron and then Sebastian will give it a go again. Go ahead, mate. Um, I think for me... <clears throat> personally it would be building on what Shania said by eliminating distractions and using that to remove excuses so for example when it comes to waking up early people say oh I can't wake up early but that that sentence in itself that that doesn't really make sense because the reason you can't do something is because you're occupying your time doing something else so, for example, the night before at 11 p.m., you're you maybe you're doing work, but you're doing work because you didn't do it earlier that day. Because while you were you were eating lunch, you were watching YouTube, you were watching Netflix, and it's just removing all of these these small distractions in order to build a more structured, like habitual life. I think. Yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. The removal of distraction is so huge. It's very difficult, but it's so meaningful. And as you said, as soon as you insert the word can't into your vocabulary, it there's a reason why some of these cliches exist. 
is that as soon as you say you can't, well, then you can't because actually you can and there's always a way and you just need to have a fucking expansion mindset and say, well, I can do it all. Begin with that place. And even saying that is uncomfortable. So I can do it all. It's like, you know what, Sebastian, I can do your job and Evan's job and I can do it all for you. You want to be that guy. You want to be that girl because they're the people that are the heroes. So that's definitely something I think, as you said, Aaron, is a, is a, is a good way to space to operate from and, and to say, you know what, that's I, I liked what you said. That sentence in itself doesn't really make sense. And we will all catch ourselves saying sentences that don't really make sense. And just being aware of that is, is powerful. So that's when you send a silly retort back. That's when you say, oh, well, what about this? Or what about that? And, and you, you take stock in those moments and think, you know what? That's just some bullshit that I'm spinning. And, 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 and the bullshit that you spin is often an echo chamber of what mediocre people that live me mediocre lives say. Does that make sense? So where's that from? It's like, oh, I can't do the dishes. And it's like, well, that's from my mom looking at me and saying, you work too hard. And me at some point tending to agree with it. That's where that's fucking from. Does that make sense? It's like, but then if you see any A players, like, well, bro, of course you can do it all. Like, why not? You know, tell me why. Tell me why I can't. There's that famous basketball player that talks about that. I think maybe LeBron James in one of his um, conferences. They say, oh, you know, can you, you know, people told me, you know, you can't do it. And I said, but, but why? Tell me why. Why can't I do it? It's possible. So cool. Troy, I think, no, I think you went already. Who's next? Sebastian. And then, sorry, I have to go, Sebastian. Yeah, so can you hear me this time? Yeah, I can. The audio is slightly low, but I can hear you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So focusing on the process of the outcome, it's easy to get fixated on, I want a six pack, I want the salary, I want X, Y, Z instead of focusing on, okay, well, I need to do this, this, and that to get there. And that's what your focus should be on, not yeah. on the outcome. Yeah. And then, yeah, just focusing on one bucket at a time so you don't dilute your focus because, yeah. And then long-term, forming long-term habits over short-term habits it will always be the way you grow over the long-term instead of having short stints of growth and then reverting back to your old ways, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you, Sebastian. Really, really powerful. I'm, I'm happy you said those things because the deferred benefit for you selfishly at Pearl Lemon will make you so much more money than incremental growth. Does that make sense? Everybody who's part of the delivery teams, you are all at best, let's say, and it's logical to think this, an employer would agree to some level of increase in salary that ranges from five to 50% even. Okay. Does that make sense? And then you can expect to see that over the course of a year, right? That's that's what I call standard, constructive, reactive growth. How do you triple your value in one year? And how do you 10 times your value in three years? Do you see that it actually involves you doing completely different things? Does that make sense, guys? And that's in all aspects of your life. That's the deferred benefit. And, you know, my deferred benefit that I'm trying to bank on now with the team that I have here is... The deferred benefit that I get from taking time out of your day when you could be focused upon client delivery is that I want everyone to walk away thinking I don't see myself anywhere but a Pearl Lemon two to three years from now because I want to build a lifelong relationship with the people that are part of this team because the quality and retention of my team determines the trajectory of my life as well. So if Temi's here in five years, I know that Temi will run rings around most people and become unstoppable. If Shania is here in five years, same thing. So that's why I'm spending the time I am to raise up your own standards because I'm optimizing for building the quality of the lifelong relationships that I have with the people in this room because I know that that's the deferred benefit that I'll get. The short-term cost is someone has messaged Sebastian angrily that a meeting needs to be pushed back and delayed. I'm willing to sacrifice the short-term costs and I might not get it right. You know, in a year from now, Temi might decide to take a different direction and that's okay because I am testing and trying to figure out the best way to optimize for the $10 million outcome. And on the basis of what I've learned right now, I think that if I can understand what I need to do and then encourage others to join me in that journey, 
that we will all reap in the rewards. And, 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 and that's, for example, literally right now, that's why I'm doing this call with the team, because some of you might think, why are we doing these calls every day? Because I'm trying to understand what levers I need to press to ensure that everyone, because, because the, 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 the rate at which you all progress is, is an individual decision. But I want to try and encourage everyone to look in the right direction. And, and, and that's you know, part of a big part of the reason why we're doing this and why I'm here and why, Sebastian, I'm so happy that you said what you said, because I want you to go after the deferred benefit. Because that's the really holy fucking cow return on investment, if that makes sense. Otherwise, the rest of it, and not that the rest of it is unimportant, because quick wins and incremental progress do make sense. But we all want the deferred benefit. We all want the big growth, because that actually is where everyone in this room wins. That's the life changing return. Great. Thank you, Sebastian. Who's next? Sorab. Yeah, so for me, the the current tree or the focus area is, of course, work related. Like after we met yesterday, yesterday, uh, today I had a two hour start of the day, which was before my usual start of the day at work. And I, I think every all of us realize that the growth can never happen in our work hours because we have time only to attend to the tasks that we have to tend to uh, attend to and finish. So we have to put in the extra efforts. Improvement is a continual thing which will happen in our personal lives and work lives. Nevertheless, till the last day of our lives, we can. no one can ever be perfect. And the day you we reach a complacent place where we are happy where we are, that is where the growth stops. Mm -hmm. So it's good to be shaken out of that comfort zone and you realize that I am where I am but there is somewhere I need to reach. And to reach there, I have to put in the efforts. No one else is going to put in the efforts. Yeah. And we have to find ways to do that. Waking up early, changing our routine, sleeping on time, partying less with friends. I say that because I see such wonderful young people here at Pearl Lemon who are not, not even half my age. Some of them would be probably one third my age. I have partied each night of my life till 35, the age of 35. I was a person who used to leave in the I used to leave home in the morning. I used to be back at one o'clock, two o'clock at night. I continued with that lifestyle for the first three, four years after marriage. Only after my daughter was two or three years old, I realized this cannot continue. Right. So things change. We are in different stages of our life. Right now. For me, the tree, of course, is the, the monetary aspect of it because I'm the sole provider in the family. There were three earning members. Now I'm the only one. I have to provide. You all are just getting started with your careers. This is a wonderful, wonderful place to be in. It is a wonderful team. Deepak, of course, is a wonderful mentor. And I, I, I see a very good team in this room and otherwise people who are not attending and I think we should give it our everything and just just taking ourselves out a bit out of our own personal comfort zones can do like he mentioned if as a delivery team if we don't deliver it affects the career of other people over here right so all of us we are not working in alienation the calling team is no different from the lead gen team nor are the account managers no different nor is the seo team or the web dev team it is all one big team. And if this whole machinery works efficiently, all of us grow together and so does the company, right? So it's as simple as that. We need, we put in the efforts and we keep going and we keep getting better at what we do because we are not perfect. None of us is, our processes are not perfect. We need to find the sweet spot and to find the sweet spot, we have to do the testing, continual improvement, new tools, new methods, and to get more efficient with our stuff. So, yeah, thank that's you. that's what I am at. No, thank you, Sora. I think that I really want the people that are at the beginning of their careers. And, of course, the beginning of your career isn't about, for example, practically Aaron or Evan being 17. It's about when your eyes open and you discover that there's a whole lot of life ahead of me. So it doesn't really matter where you're at in your journey. But to Saurabh's point, there are a lot of people in this room that have a long life ahead of you. And I'm, I'm just, I feel fortunate to be able to hear from Saurabh and for you to 
learn from my own lessons because a lot of these lessons have taken me longer than I would have liked to have understood. And, you know, one of them, for example, the practical one being that the happiness and the culture and the determination to achieve victory of the people that I have at the company determines the actual altitude of my life. It determines the life I can have with my children. It determines the happiness I can bring to Daniela. It determines the future of everything that I'll touch. So you're actually my most important people. This is my family because this is the people and the team that I, I really hope, and as you are to each other. And that's where people talk about culture and it's familial. We should look to each other as not just employees working remotely, but as we look to brothers and sisters, because actually Temi should care. And I'm sure you do care when you think about it on those terms that, oh, wow, I determine to some degree the quality of food that Shania will put on the table for her child. What a fucking big responsibility. Wow. And I'm, I'm bitching about waking up at 5 a.m. Does this make sense, guys, where I'm going with this? It's like we all have that. So I want you to that, that, that humbles me when I think about like the, the power that we all have. Most people just walk around life not even realizing that, not realizing that actually waking up at 5 a.m. is not about me. It's about everyone that I love. Everyone that I love, because the gains that I'll make can ripple, have a huge ripple effect on everyone around me. So, yeah, look, look, look to each other as you'd look to brothers and sisters, because it is the case. And in fact, you can have more influence over the quality of life that Shania can have than probably your own siblings, Temi, because you're in direct control of some of the outcomes that Shania can have in her life that Aaron can have in his by making those changes. And that's for me, it's that, that's for me why without question, I want to spend the time with you without question, why nothing else is as big as people understanding these lessons. None of our clients are not deep reach, not focus 360, not dark global. None of them is none of that actual money matters. There's, no matter the size of the ticket, the team in this room are the gold that I'm trying to invest in and trying to nurture and trying to grow. And, and you all are interlinked together and dependent and reliant upon each other. So hold yourself to a higher standard. Be the best version of yourself. Be in your top 1% because then you can change the trajectory of everyone's lives around you. And 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 I think that to, 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 to Saurabh's point that the, the deep work, the deferred benefit will most typically come from the hours at when we are not at work. So my, my, my biggest goal inside of work actually right now is to drive you all to be the most mo motivated, badass motherfuckers out there, because then I know to a decent degree, the rest will take care of itself. Does that make sense? It took me way too long to learn that. It took me six years of being a bit of an arsehole at work to learn that I was making completely the wrong investment and that none of my clients matter as much as my team and that, that, Part of that needs me to transform my own ego when I see, for example, mistakes that I think should have not happened or issues this, because I think, Deepak, that's your ego. Because think of, you know, you control the financial future, but actually Troy controls your financial future as well. So Troy's development is way, way more important over the long term than me being upset about a particular thing that Troy does in any given moment. So, so, so that's, you know, also one of the journeys that I'm trying to figure out because this team matters. And, and, and if, 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 if I do it, if I, if I do it correctly and I get more Temmies and Sebastians and Evans and Aaron's, then everyone will benefit and everyone will flourish. And if, you know, Evan determines in his own life that he wants to be the best version of himself and that he wants to become unstoppable, he will change fucking everything in his own life and actually the lives of everyone else around him because he will set a new bar at Pearl Lemon. He'll set a new standard. He will do things that in time, and that's what I want you to have happen. I want you all to, at one point in your journey over the next couple of years, do things that when you tell them to others, they will appear like fucking magic. So yeah, I cold call, I book eight appointments a day. You're like, what do you mean you book eight appointments a day? Like really? So I cold call, bro. Nah, I think you're lying. How do you do that? 
you know, I'll do it in four hours as well. Well, fucking hell, you know, my, my whole life changed. And you know what, Aaron, I showed Aaron everything I know. And then Aaron showed me everything he knew. And then as a consequence, that meant that Shania, who was also doing fantastically well, was able, you were all able to triple your income. Do you see how it's all gateways, all gateways, all gateways, all gateways. And it all comes from determining that you want excellence in the things that you do. And that's where, if you can dedicate your lifetime to a little bit of discomfort each day, you'll fucking win. You just win. A little bit of discomfort each day, in good measure, will lead to an invincible version of myself. And I like that quote. And sometimes when I feel overwhelmed, or I feel yeah, overwhelmed, or underappreciated, burnt out, I, I really like this quote that, just remember, in 10 years from now, you will laugh at the problems you have today. It helps me a lot sometimes. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Because you will find the way. You will find the way. So in 10 years from now, you will laugh at the problems you will have today. It's always a, a, a you know, a, something that, 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 that holds me. Okay, brilliant. Who wants to go next? Cool, Temi. Yeah, and I wasn't here for about like 30 minutes of it. But from what I did pick up in the beginning was basically focusing on let's say like one segment so i'll use like health as an example so i will say something like exercising is a little i think hard to do in terms of like the working hours but like what aaron said you you can't say like i can't because you still can of course put that in it doesn't have to be something like let's say like one hour workouts but obviously what you can do because having that discipline kind of like carries over into let's say work and any other areas of your life you know like building habits that do kind of have this like knock effect um on other areas in your life so yeah, i'll say that's yeah what i took from that okay amazing and if health is the bucket that you think is the gateway to everything else then amazing choose that to be the the the, the goal that you chose to focus upon and and i will applaud you for that yeah go ahead go ahead Jenny. yeah no just actually still adding on to that yeah, it's more i would say specifically with like exercise because you have to really push yourself you know you have to wake up and still do things that you're not like i know that video that showed up to shana and i was saying like he doesn't always want to go to the gym or exercise but i mean like if you're able to kind of push yourself mentally to exercise you know even if it's like 10 minutes a day it's still better than not exercising at all and i think that kind of like mental discipline is something that you exercise like yeah mentally exercise i'll say that that does help let's say with work and even if you know like oh, i'm so tired but i'd rather finish this today before my day ends than to push it over to tomorrow that makes a big difference and you continuously like build that as a habit not just like physically but also mentally yeah yeah, yeah. amazing look i naturally am a big advocate of health habits and, and building them given given what, what what i do and yeah i think that um, I'd love for you to figure that out and, uh, you know, to everyone, if there's things that you require in the day that will take you away from work, but contribute to your professional growth and personal growth, like do it, like I advocate it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm optimizing for amazing, happy employees who can team partners, brothers and sisters, who can deliver the ultimate return on investment. So I don't mind because I work it's also part of the reason why people can use tracker B if they want, but I don't care about it anymore because it's optimizing for the wrong metric on a base system, trust based system. I trust that you want what's best for you. And I trust that what you want that's best for you will also ultimately end up being what's best for the company. So if you guys need to do certain things that you think will be for the further development of your personal lives, then I trust you to go and do it in any of the time that you have this available to you. Okay. Because I under because again I'm optimizing. I want lifelong relationships with teams. I don't want to you know that's that's the goal. That's the people tell me oh deeper you know and I used to believe that you know I used to say to people oh in digital lifetime expectancy of employees is like one year or two years because people bounce and this and that and I'm like that's other people's versions of what's normal. I don't give a shit about that. I want people to come here and to be like I never want to fucking leave. <laughs> I want that and it's like well how do you do that? You know, you want to help people transform in such a way that they touch everyone else's lives around you. And if and if I can, you know, be part of your own professional and personal success, Temi, then amazing. So, you know, if in case you're wondering, practically, if you want to go and do your first two kilometer run, five kilometer, whatever, you know what I mean? 
at 2 p.m. in the daytime, I'd be like, go fucking do it. If you're like, Deepak, I'm fucking dead. I can't work tomorrow. I'd be like, amazing. Good. That's progress. It's meant to hurt. Try again the next, like whatever. So, you know, I give you guys permission on that front because because I'm optimizing for the lifelong relationship that I hope that we will have. So thank you, Temi. I think that's a really, you know, admirable goal and I I, I advocate it. Great. Is there anyone else who's not yet spoken? Um, or we captured everyone. Okay. All right, amazing. Well, look, on that on that note, I think that let me just put my headphones in because I I love that Cristiano Ronaldo video. I watch it at least one or two times a day and I'm going to share it again for those of you. By the way, it's like 20 seconds, but I I listen to it a couple of times a day right now actually because it's it's such a huge motivator for me. So I'll share it with you. Um talent without work is nothing and work without talent is nothing. I give you the map. You are willing to do that? Yeah. It's the main the main point because everyone wants to be Cristiano but I give you the map. You think you will do it that? It's difficult. It's the discipline. The discipline is the most difficult thing. Small details in the end of the day will make the big difference. Talent without work is nothing and work without talent is nothing. I give you the map. You are willing to do that? Yeah. It's the main the main point because everyone wants to be Cristiano but I give you the map. If you choose to go on this journey for yourselves then one of the things that he also goes on to talk about is that it's not just a difficult work, it's a difficult life. The answers are all out there, people. Um, just just grab hold of them and you can absolutely live life on your own terms and, and have a motherfucking extraordinary life inside and outside of Pearl Lemon. Cool. Thank you, everybody.